So it turns out that the 4.4 patch and the 5v5 weapons aren't the only thing we needed to talk about yesterday. Something else came to light that we really should be discussing. The Chapter 4 roadmap released back in June has in fact been incorrect since it released and is displaying information that should not be there. Last night, in a reply on the Battlefield 5 Reddit page, community manager Jeff Braddock revealed that the mention of new vehicles and gadgets placed into the multiplayer tile of that Chapter 4 roadmap that I'm showing you on screen right now should not have been there. And that comes after confirming with DICE developers that the next big push of vehicles and gadgets was actually set to come in Chapter 5, the Pacific. To clarify this issue, and this bit is quite important so please pay attention, the image used in the Reddit thread to highlight this issue is the roadmap for Chapter 4 specifically, and it's slightly different to the one now being hosted by Dyson EA on the Battlefield website. The image on the left of your screen is the one containing the mistake, and this was the roadmap released on June 5th, and the image on the right is the current roadmap for Battlefield 5. It is a bit confusing. The roadmap on the left provides more detail and text about Chapter 4, but it's technically incorrect, and then I wouldn't blame you if you didn't know there were two different roadmaps displaying similar information, and one of them was an old one and one of them is a new one. It is all very confusing. I checked some replies on the Reddit thread and found that this image on the right hand side is the most recent roadmap and it's currently the one being used by DICE at this time because it includes information beyond the end of Chapter 4 and into Chapter 5. I told you this was a little bit confusing. Honestly, it's all over the place. However, despite all of this, the mention of vehicles and gadgets coming to Chapter 4 in the Chapter 4 roadmap does remain incorrect. Braddock's post on Reddit alludes to this. The answer I received from the vehicle dev was, what are you talking about? I showed him the image you shared, and he said, that's wrong. The next big push of vehicles and gadgets is with the Pacific. He's frustrated with the inaccuracy of the specific chapter roadmap, and he's escalating it to his bosses and studio leadership, and I'm escalating it to the marketing team to find out why it has this info in the first place. The body of the article doesn't talk about vehicles or gadgets, it only talks about weapons and elites, so the image is inaccurate. I'm sorry. This, to me, apart from creating yet another debatable point about the content available in Battlefield 5, shows me there is some real internal issues happening at the studio at the moment. Looking past the fact that the roadmap is now technically not the one in use by the team, it was still incorrect when it was the one in use. And that means, despite the piece of media having gone through multiple layers in the DICE development team, and then likely through EA as well to verify everything, information was still released that was incorrect. And that's really, really worrying. If all the different teams attached to the content that was going to be displayed in that roadmap approve the roadmap, then that really does expose some massive communication issues within the studio. But it is somewhat consistent with the very shaky progress that Battlefield 5 has made, or the case may be hasn't made, since March. At the launch of Chapter 4, a bunch of vehicle camos were released into the armory. They were available for company coin. That was a mistake. They were taken away a few hours later, and we haven't seen them since. The pit crew soldier outfit, another mistake. Initially, it was offered for company coin right at the beginning of the game, and then it turned up again in the armory as a different rarity and only available for Boins. Turns out the skin had been incorrectly labelled for some time, and DICE had only just realised there was an issue. Then there's the several delays that we've had, the release date changes for content we've seen, the buggy patches, the bugs still present in the game for months on end. The list goes on. All of these factors contribute to what I think looks like a state of near chaos for DICE at the moment. You can't say that their showing has been a good one for Battlefield 5, but when you start to dive a little bit deeper, you can see a development team that's basically in freefall. They're trying to scrabble themselves back into a position of control, but they keep tripping over every time they try and get up. And it only makes things worse when issues like this one turn up, where content has quote-unquote been promised through a roadmap, only for that statement to be backtracked on and then adjusted. The more issues that continue to crop up, the clearer the picture within the studio becomes. And to me, right now, it really does look like there are some serious problems internally that are heavily affecting Battlefield 5 as a result.
Now, DICE does have a really long history of producing some fantastic first-person shooter games, and there's no real disputing the fact that they know how to make Battlefield games. But right now, the situation they find themselves in is really starting to hurt their reputation as a AAA development studio. Like most other game development studios, issues do arise, and sometimes it takes a little bit more time to fix those issues. Game development is quite difficult. You can look at Bungie with Destiny 2 as a good example, as well as Ubisoft with Rainbow Six Siege. Both of those games were super shaky for quite a while, but with a clear vision in mind, those development teams managed to turn those games around, and they turned them into success stories. The problem DICE has here, though, is that their issues extend beyond just one video game. If we go back a little bit, Battlefield 4, that was a rough game. But to DICE's credit, they did turn that game around, they got it back on track, and they produced an excellent shooter for the community to enjoy. Battlefield 4 is to DICE what Rainbow Six Siege is to Ubisoft. Both games had their sticky moments, and both were worked through. But now, DICE has had Star Wars Battlefront 2 tarnish its reputation in 2017, and that took them a long time to turn that around, and now they have Battlefield 5 on their hands. That's three extremely high-profile games in the last decade that have really hurt the reputation of the studio for various different reasons. Now, the name DICE, to me at least, that used to represent a development studio of the highest quality. They were pushing boundaries of what was possible in video games, and they were producing titles that really excited and wowed gamers around the world. But now, the name DICE to many people out there is one that represents a development studio that has chalked up more losses than wins over the last five or six years. The years where gaming really became a social entity. People talk about gaming games a lot more now than they did last decade. I mean, look what we're doing right now. I'm making a video about what's happening to our favourite game franchise and just how bad things have gotten. That didn't really exist 10 years ago. It did, but it was only just starting to happen. People talk more now, they share more now, and they debate more now because platforms exist for them to do so. And in that regard, the noise created when something goes right or wrong is much louder than it's ever been before. And right now, DICE is falling victim to that very scenario. Every comment section that I go to, every Twitter thread, Reddit post, forum post, whatever, there's a huge amount of negativity, not just being directed towards Battlefield 5, but towards DICE themselves because of the situation that Battlefield 5 is in. DICE has really missed the mark with this game. And at the moment, unfortunately, they're continuing to miss the mark with their live service as well. And that is really disappointing as a big fan of the Battlefield franchise. Battlefield is DICE, and DICE is Battlefield. It's their franchise, it's their baby. And with Battlefield 5, they've really dented the confidence of a lot of their dedicated fan base. I don't think this is a situation that DICE or EA wants for Battlefield 5. I don't think this has been manufactured in any way, shape or form, but we're here because of decisions made quite a long time ago, and the effects are still being dealt with now. It remains to be seen if DICE can really get this game back on track or not, because we are so much further after launch than I think everyone expected these issues to still be present. I know that the DICE team can do incredible things with their games. We've experienced that in the past with Battlefield 3, 4 and 1. They turned Battlefield 4 around completely and turned it into something incredible. And I don't think anyone really expected Battlefield 1, a World War 1 AAA shooter. It was quite an achievement from them. But I just hope the current team at DICE has the energy and the direction to do something good with Battlefield 5 as well. There are some really big issues that need to be resolved here, and these issues aren't just bugs in a video game anymore. I think the studio has some big problems at the moment. So yeah, I got a little bit sidetracked there listening back to what I was just saying, but I wanted to talk about the studio. I thought it was relevant to the conversation we were having, and it's something that I've picked up on from the sidelines for quite some time now, really. If you piece together all the different mistakes and issues, it does create a much bigger picture about what's happening at DICE at the moment. And like I say, I think something major has to change because at the moment, it's just not working. 
Thanks very much for watching anyway, guys. Leave some comments down below in the comment section and let me know what you think on all this. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.